Hello friends, welcome to this exercise to draw a gear in AutoCAD. I'm going to explain the full process step by step. Then, in order to make the things easier, I attached a DWG file in the description of the video with this exercise and the dimensions. So if you prefer, you can download it and try to make it at the same time. Or you can pause the video, make the exercise by yourself and check the video after. So that's up to you. Now we can begin. We are going to start drawing the circles. I click on this button circle and then anywhere on the workspace for placing the center. Finally, I need to insert the radius, which is 150. Then I'm going to repeat the command, but this time by pressing its alias which is the letter C. For those who don't know, the alias is actually the shortcut for the commands. For example, the alias for the command line is L and for the command arc is A. The second circle has a radius of 200 and don't forget to click on the same center because the two circles are concentric. Then I need another circle, but this time, instead of clicking on the command, I'm going to press enter as it turns on the previous command used. This time the radius is 500. For the last circle, let's use a different tool this time, the command of set. We can use this command to create parallel lines, smaller or larger copy of a polyline, or even concentric circles. So it's simple. I specify an offset distance of 20. I click on this last circumference, move the pointer inwards and click. And press enter to exit the command. The next step is to draw the teeth of the gear. I'm going to use an extra object snap mode, the quadrant. And with that, I'm able to snap the points where the angles are 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees. It's like north, east, south and west. Ok, first I need a line from this point, a vertical line, that measures 50 mm. From there I will make another line, but this time horizontal, with 20 mm of length. The third one, as there is an angle of 70 degrees with the horizontal direction, I'm going to place the pointer below the horizontal reference line, press tab, I'm going to type 70, press tab again, now the angle is blocked, meaning that I just need the length of the line. Once the lines don't intersect easily with circles, I place the second point after the intersection, more or less here. Then with the command mirror, I'm going to pick these two lines, press enter again and place the mirror line along the vertical line. And remember, the length doesn't matter, just the direction. Then with the command trim, I'm going to delete the extra segments and if you are familiar with this command from a long time, just let you know that recently it changed the way it works. Now I only need to click in a segment of a line and it erases automatically from the nearest intersections. And also now with trim I can delete an entire line, something that before it was not possible. Next, I need the fillet command to round the corners of the teeth. Click on the button. Now before doing anything, we have to set the radius. And if it's the first time you use this command, have in mind that it defaults to radius zero and basically you wouldn't see any effect. Now by looking at the example, I need to specify the radius as five. And then click on two lines to generate an arc between them. Press enter to reactivate the last command used and as the radius is the same, just click directly on the lines of the next corner. And finally, I need to apply fillet in the intersections between the tooth and the circle. Now that the tooth is complete, I can convert to a polyline all these lines and arcs. Although this is not required, then it's going to be easier to select the object. Now that everything is selected, 
I'm going to find join. It's this button in the hidden icons on the modify tab. I click on it and now we have here a polyline. So the next thing we are going to do here is to use the command polar array. The process is easy. I'm going to click on this arrow and choose polar array. Then select this polyline, click for the center point of array, so it's going to be the center of this circle and as you can see by default the polar array places six items, the tooth, around the center. Then we can edit this array at a special panel for array creation on the ribbon and I'm going to change the number of items to 26. Then click on an empty space and the space in between change it to adapt to the new number of items. Finally I can press enter to confirm and exit the command. Now we need to draw the six small holes inside the first string. First, I'm going to draw a line between these two quadrant points of both circles. Then I turn on circle and I need to find the midpoint of this line. Mm, but it's not appearing. Maybe I need to check out the object snap modes here. Yes, the midpoint was off and that's why it didn't show up. I click to turn it on and now you can see the triangle that represents the midpoint. Click there and draw a circle with 10 millimeters of radius. Now with polar array again, I click on the circle, use the same center point. Ah, I need to hover the circle to show the center. Now I click and this time as I want exactly six circles displayed around the ring, I press enter. Finally click on the line and delete it. Then the next group of circles, they start at this angle of 60 degrees and they go clockwise until they reach the same angle but on the opposite direction. Now let's see how to place six items there. First of all, I need to draw a line from the center with a 60 degree angle to the horizontal direction. After clicking on the first point, I'm going to press tab, type 60, press tab again and put the second point more or less here. Then I select the line and with the grips located in both extremities, I'm going to narrow the line, move one grip to this intersection and the second one to the intersection on the other circle. Let's make a circle in the middle point of this line and the radius is 50. So once again let's use the polar array but this time I don't want the items to display around all the area. By clicking on this grip I can shorten the distance between each triangle. I just click around here. Then I'm going to switch the direction to the other side in this button. And finally I have to set the angle on fill to 120 because it's 2 times 60. Then I need the circle in the middle with a radius of 50 and the hole has also these four sections at the quadrant points. First I need to draw a line here with 10 millimeters and then make a horizontal to the right with length 5. Press escape, select the line and then with this grip I'm going to extend it 5 millimeters to this side and as you can see this process is the same as when I was making the tooth. To confirm the distance you can double click on the line to check out the quick properties. Now I need two vertical lines from the corners 
and with the command trim, I'm going to erase the extra segments and the line in the middle as I don't need it anymore. Next, activate join to merge the three lines in a polyline and with polar array I'm going to place this polyline as four items around the circle. Now pay attention to this important tip. When we are creating an array, we can see this icon here, associative. If it's checked, the items merge together in an array object, and in that way I can edit the array later if I need. Although if it's unchecked, the items remain independent and are not converted in an array. Due to that, I won't be able to edit the array later, like changing the number of items or the spacing. But if they are associated as an array, don't worry, you can always explode the array to bring back to the original objects. So, the step is using the command trim to erase the division between the items and circles. Simply click on the segments or use the selection arrow if you want. And at the end press enter. Now we almost finished the gear, but there are also these segments between each tooth and the circle to get rid of. The problem is they are 26, so it takes a bit longer to use trim to erase them all. Okay, it's actually possible to do this a bit faster and probably it would be worth if your job is creating gear drawings all day long. So with the trim command I will switch to cutting edges. Ah, and if you are using an older version of AutoCAD this is the option by default. Select these two polylines and the circle. Press enter. Then I click to erase these two segments. And after, if I click here, I erase everything until the next cutting edge, which is exactly this point. Finally, if I do polar array to this arc, and change the number of items to 26, you will see that they fit exactly in the gaps. Ok, the 2D gear is done. And now we will see how we can model this exercise. First, let's switch the workspace to 3D Basics. And by doing this, the ribbon changes panels in order to show icons to draw simple 3D objects. Now I am going to rotate the workspace in a 3D perspective. Just press and hold shift and the mouse wheel at the same time, and then drag slowly down. Next, I'm going to use the command press pull to extrude closed boundaries. It's simple. Click on the button and then I'm going to the teeth side and push all this area 50 mm up, for example. Oh, but first I'm going to change the view here to an X-ray, for example, because it's better to see the difference between the solids. Then the next one Let's put it a bit smaller, 40 mm. Then the ring, also the same height as the first area, 50 mm, and the last part, 40. Ok, the first half side is done. Now, as most of the gears are symmetric in terms of width, I'm going to change the current view in these controls here, to front. Now, it's going to be easy to mirror all these objects along the x-axis. I'm going to select everything. Activate the command mirror. And now I can make the mirror line exactly along the bottom edge of the gear. So this endpoint is good. I click move to the right and click again in another point in the same horizontal direction, that's important. Great. Finally, if I want to merge all the solids in one, 
I can go to Union, select everything and press Enter. Now the full gear is a single solid. Ok, the former 2D objects are still there. It's not a problem, but if you want, it's possible to move the solids to the side with the command move and in this way we will not see that border in the middle of the teeth. Ok, this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and also I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, Cad in Black. Thank you and I'm sure we will meet next time.